Welcome to an exclusive preview here of the Range Rover Evoque convertible on Autobefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. We'll be very excited because we're taking all a look on the exterior and the interior and of course we'll open and close the roof and solve the question, does it really make sense to go in this very niche? How does car really look closed and opened? How does it work? How is it in the interior? And what about the trunk? So let's take a look at this very new car, this whole new concept, which is only the second time someone is doing that, SUV plus convertible. Let's go. Start here with the front of this all black car, a glossy black front grille and huge kind of air intakes. But if you take a closer look at them, they are just fake. It's just for the styling and looks a little bit cheap. I'm asking a bit. Everything else looks, you know, very modern. The Evoque is, you know, very famous for a spectacular design. Some don't like it. Some do like it even more. It's a very polarizing car still, especially now in the convertible version. If you wonder what about that red car behind me, you see that's the all-new Jaguar F-Pace. You'll also find that review linked in the video description later on if you want to watch that. Let's now move on to the side profile because that's obviously the most interesting thing. Now it gets really interesting. We see that in the side profile, the emphasis of the design is still on the front axle. See with the powerful wheel archers, supercharged air outtakes, on the top of the hood, although it's not supercharged, just a design element, 20 inch for the alloy, massive and with a matte black finish. Jagoland will also want to speak to women as customers with this Evoque convertible. Maybe not in this all black finish, but we'll talk about that one later and of course discuss that, fee uh, that fact in the comments. If we further move on to the side profile, and that's now the main thing about the convertible, Usually, because we have it open right now, and the coupe style, you know, it has either those set up right here, two doors, or it's also the five door version available, or four doors here in the front. And it has this coupe style ending, and here is now is all open. And as the concept was firstly released in 2012, the strange thing was a lot of people saying, oh wow, that really looks rather good because the only other SUV convertible is the Nissan Murano and I think we can all agree that this one really looks really ugly. I really have to admit, looking at that one here now, it does work. Or what's your opinion on that one? Really crucial is the rear. By the way, the car we see right now is the HSE. It's kind of the top trim level of the Evoque. That's also the scheme of the car because this one here, the convertible, will not be available for the entry, for the standard trim levels. The other normal Coupe Evoque is offering. So the Evoque Cabriolet will just be a top trim level car, like middle to top trim level. So what we see here is that they got it quite well sorted out with the hood. It's hidden like in the F-Type, you know, it's not completely hidden like, for example, in Audi soft top convertibles, it's open but still you have an even surface and it so much resembles the one from the Jaguar F-Type. It's also something to do with it. It's the same supplier. So Webasto is a very famous German company who is producing all the hoods here for the Jaguar convertibles as well. What I'm kind of mixed about is you know, this huge wing and we have to sort German lesson here because when we um, describe in German you know, a very, a very huge wing. We say pommes theke, and that is one thing you serve French fries on because it's so huge. And to me, it looks a little bit like that. And well, I suppose you can also get rid of it if you are um, not picking um, this exact version here. I think I would try to get rid of it because I think it doesn't really fit to the car. And I already show you right now how it looks like with the trunk from the side when you open it, because that's also a remarkable thing. You cannot, of course, 
go for the whole hatch, you have to de redesign that. Just from a design point of view, it looks really strange when opening that here, and also reminds me of a, a Citroën DS3 convertible. Uh, but you'll see, for a convertible then, overall, that perspective, there's quite reasonable space in the trunk here, and well, it's a quite low loading sill here as well, and you have to <laughs> dig deep, kind of, but you can still use it for the everyday. And you can see replacement tire, full one, is also right here. Well, it's an off-road car still, still has off-road capabilities. That's also an important point. Now let's close the roof for the first time. Both ways take about 20 seconds. Seems a little bit long to me, but let's see. Same system as in the F-Type, you can see it. Not almost the same. The roof is huge, of course. What do you think about the speed and also about the design? We'll give you different perspectives on the closed roof now. What you can already see here right now, that it's really flat and it's really astonishing. It's quite long but still kept in that flat way and you see that well, we don't have a coupe style ending here now it's you know rather a sharp angle but i think it looks still quite good um, especially from the front i think it does work from the rear perspective as you'll soon see um, i'm not that really sure it reminds me a little bit of a volkswagen beetle or what's your opinion about it? i think there's a lot to discuss about the different angles how it really looks like but basically, I think it works. And here it is again from the rear. Yet again, I think that the rear wing is a little bit destroying the whole line of the car. But I'm really looking forward to your comments, what you think about it, because it's obviously, you know, a topic on its own. Let's open it again. Let some fresh air in. Steps down, and that's it. Windows go up. You see that we also have a rear window, and that will be also very important for the wind features. And we'll also have a wind cut, I can see it here right now already. And from this perspective, I also want to close the roof again that you can have a better look. Uh, and then I think we are, we're kind of done with the, with the roof topic so far. This is a huge space there. I wouldn't uh, open it, you know, when I'm driving too fast, but they also have a limit for that one as well. So I think, well, you have a lot of cars in one here with that one car, definitely. And um, the funny thing is that, for example, in Germany, they say they calculate with about one third of total Evoque sales as a convertible now. That's really interesting. Of course, Germany is one of the main markets for convertibles, along with Great Britain and California, those are the three main convertible markets. So really, it's a very small niche, but you know, especially the premium manufacturers tend to really go into every small niche nowadays. The Evoque was not planned as a convertible from the beginning on, something that was done later. Therefore, we also have added stiffness in the lower part of the car, also in the uh, at the side and the doors, and also at the rear. You cannot flip the rear bench. There will um, maybe be a version with the ski hatch, if it comes to, but here, as it is right now, there is none. You cannot flip the rear bench because that will also be added with stability. But they promise, even if we open the door, there will be so much stiffness that you can stand on uh, like just two or three wheels and it will do nothing to the car. You can still open and close the car. So Land Rover is promising that this car will still be fully off-road capable and also have this off-road stiffness still. And beneath the hood we'll have the new Jaguar Land Rover Ingenium Diesel. It says here Ingenium. Um, there will be um, the diesel variants available and of course also the turbo petrol engine. The old one which is consuming quite a lot of fuel. Let's get in 
inside. The door handles are, well, quite small, but it's still a pre-reaction car and if the windows are lowered, it always sounds a little bit different, of course, when, when, when you have the windows higher. HSE, that means it's the top trim level and it, of course, also here in this case means real enemy seat, which I'm not a fan of. And I suppose you can only get it with those that um, will probably be the case if you cannot get the lowest trim level. The speed, by the way, at which you can close the roof is set officially 50 kilometers an hour. I'm really amazed by that. Um, it doesn't look like that, let's take it that way. Of course, the standard Evoque interiors remains rather the same as we know also from the Coupe version. It's a really stylish interior, definitely, and um, you see a lot of refinement. There, even in the Evoque, you know, this is here again leather now, but there's also a nice textile service available for the Evoque, and they have done a very good job there for often offering alternatives in some of the trim levels. So you just look at the configurator or at the price list. I'll take a seat here, and um, it's beeping here right now because the door's open and um, no one was sitting on the driver's seat. You see, now it's, um, it's done. The small icon, by the way, in the front here in the instruments is even the icon from the convertible. You see, now it's, you know, the car isn't running as well, so it says battery low. Here, that's the icon of the convertible and not of the coupe. I really like those details. The refinement in the interior is generally very good. Also, if you take a look at, you know, pressing buttons and stuff, also when you hear it, it almost sounds like from the sound laboratory of, of Audi. And so they have, over the years, stepped up this level here in the interior refinement. And the Land Rover Range Rover interior build quality is right more at the moment better than the one of the new Jaguars, definitely. What else can we see here? The middle console, covered in real aluminum here with a checkered structure. I really love that. And you can see the huge new screen, that one will be available. Um, also just adds an option, usually you get a smaller one. And that one here has um, some touch options. We'll soon get into the details what you can do with this infotainment screen. But what I really like is that you get kind of sorted cockpit, you know, with, for example, those aluminum covers here and everything got a straight line. So it looks rather cleaned up. However, you also have a standard off-road cockpit section here. You know, this styling here also from a Land Rover Discovery or something like that, um, you know, just for the, for the heating. Very clear here with this display. And you'll have the standard driving selector, which is popping out here for the drive modes. And then also the different off-road modes, just for normal uh, grass and snow um, and, uh, you know, wood, uh, deep ruts and also sand. The off-road drive, all we drive, you know, with the small Land Rovers, it's a little bit different. The big Land Rovers have this permanent all-wheel drive, 50-50 basically, and then adapting. These ones with the small ones, Range Rover, Evoque, um, the Discovery Sport, formerly also the Freelander. Those small ones have the front wheel drive plus rear wheel drive on demand. The lowest trim versions, they have just front wheel drive available, but the, I think, um, as I've heard so far, also the command will just be available with all-wheel drive if it's just in the higher trim levels. And that's the basic cockpit overview in the front here. So let's take a look here at the infotainment system in detail. You have those four basic apps and um, you can also um, scroll right here to different modes. What is quite interesting is, for example, with the ambient lighting you can set two different colors here if you have the higher trim levels. That's a really nice thing, definitely. Oh, racing red, that sounds good. Let's go back. Um, Bluetooth connection is possible, of course. You can control the seat temperature in, in here. Now, ah, well, not when the engine is not running. Um, cameras will also be available, but also not when the engine, ah, well, it does work when the engine is not running. See, this is the fake drone view from above around, but this camera is not available right now because we have the, <laughs> the, the door open, but um, the camera is, seated, is placed in the, in the mirror, side mirror. But let's see, you can take a look at the closer one here or go back. Very nice system. Then GPS, let's take a look at the GPS. Um, well, we have seen better visualizations, definitely, as for the size and um, also for, you know, for the clearness. You can put 3D or 2D and um, let's see if we can... Yeah, that does work. Ah, there it is. Now I have full screen. That looks better than definitely. 
and you can also zoom in and out like being on an iPad. We are in Switzerland right now. And what I'm quite amazed of, you see the reaction times. It works pretty well. So they have done a good job here doing this new entertainment system that was really out of date so far. I think that's the basic overview here. Storage spaces at the inside of the doors, well, they're not too small, but you cannot really put bottles in there. That's not that well possible. And the glove box, sliding down quite smoothly, and reasonable space here definitely for the glove box. In the middle console, we see there are two beverage holders, and you can flip down the cover, which is from good quality here. You see fingerprints on it, but you know everything is really solidly built. Also, again here, this test here, you know, when you open it and try to shake it sideboards, this is really totally fixed, and it's still one of the very early cars we see here. Two USB slots in and there, and there you can also see how the key will look like, a standard Range Rover key, quite slim, but um, yeah, that's, I think, quite fine. And for your sunglasses, there's also a space up right here. So one of the most important things here in this car, well, the seat position is very comfortable, and there have been some convertibles where I said, okay, great convertible feeling, but you know, not that comfortable because a lot of convertibles are rather sporty. And you know, if you take a convertible not for a sporty ride, but more for a lifestyle, for, you know, for just for pleasure, then it makes sense to say, okay, we build a little bit higher, more comfortable convertibles. Um, so that is, I think, the main sense of this car here. Well, the overview is not too good because still you, you sit higher, but you know, the, with the hood, with a small windscreen, that knows, that's not the best thing for a good overview, but it's just a thing of the Evoque itself. It's, you have the same thing in the coupe. But you do profit from sitting higher because you have a higher seating vision, especially when you're a little bit taller. And you've seen it here as well, also when the roof was closed. Um, maybe I, I can do that again because uh, we want to look at the headspace. Um, what's quite strange, by the way, is um, when I, um, therefore I I'm got mistaken again here, the button here for the roof in the middle, you've seen it. Um, if you press it, you know, to the back side, then the roof is closing. I'm not sure why they did that. It's the same in the F type. I was really puzzled why they did that in the opposite way. Now again to the headspace, and um, you can see, well, here it's quite okay, but when I move to the front, that gets really close. I'm one meters 86. That does still work. Probably you shouldn't be really taller, but I mean, if you're even a little bit taller, maybe you sit a little bit more behind then, and then you don't have this fixed plastic in the front, then you have the space to the roof. That's okay, but usually, I mean, if you want to drive safe, you rather sit also in the front, that you have good control over the steering wheel. You can also adjust the steering wheel, of course, up, front, and also back and forth. Maybe I should put the steering wheel more towards myself now, that I can then move a little bit back with the seat and I don't hit, hit it here in the front. So that's one critical thing. You have to do a test seating before buying this car if you're really, really tall. Even more interesting will it be with the rear seats. And um, well, you see, with the roof closed, it will be a little bit hard. So it is definitely easier to get in if the roof is, by the way, the, that rattling sound you hear, if you, I think, um, you know, put some oil in it, that will be removed then. So the really interesting thing is now, what about the space in the rear? So I also want to have the windows lowered. I can also do it at the side of the doors. And let me just flip the seats now. So what is good that we have different electronic possibilities here. We can not only do it in the lower part, also just right here, that is possible. Let's, let's try to remember where that seat actually is. Let's maybe remember this line here to really look like how much space we have when the driver is still in that position. Because when it's like that, it's really hard to get in. But so with the electronic support, it's fairly easy to get in then, especially when the roof is open. I mean, see, so when its roof is closed, that will be very hard then. And let's now move the seat back to where it was. And you know, we had this line, it was going a little bit like this. And just asking Thomas today, our cameraman, was this kind of the line? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, okay. So that one will be it. And when it's like this, 
me with almost 190, it does work. My feet are standing a little bit up, um, but they're fitting under the seat. And you see knee space, well, there is no real knee space left, but it does fit exactly. Um, so when it's open, I think it does work. As long as the wind cut is not mounted, you can see it right here. That one will be the openings for the, um, you know, for the, for the wind deflector. Will be very important in this car, definitely. Um, maybe one last test here. If we then again close the roof, what about my headspace then? Because that might be relevant information for you if you think about, okay, maybe I'm not buying it as a second car. I want to buy it as a primary car. And whoever wants to sit in the rear, now it's flipping down. Yeah, it's a roof opening and closing time here today at Autogefühl. I hope you like that. So, well, it works, and the reason is the roof is really straight. It's not falling too far down, and so, well, my hairs are touching the ceiling now, but basically, that is still quite okay. So I would say this convertible is really suitable for, for adults. But then again, as you have this SUV BSS here, you hardly have that with other convertibles, so there's really no problem with four adults here. So, I think. What's, what's missing? And yeah, let's drive the car. Oh, sorry, we can't do that today. I would love to. It's still not possible. That will follow at the later stage. When it's online, that full driving review, it will then also later be linked in the video description. Always be sure to check out the Autografie video descriptions. You see a lot of places. There are different videos that are kind of connected to the setting or to the brand or to this very car. So there you can, after you watch this video, also move on. I think we'll move on to our today's conclusion now. By the way, to move the seat backwards, it's really manually that you don't get squished automatically. But if you press it to the front, then just press it once and it moves all the way to the front that you have the easier entry and also well, getting out. And, and there you see when the roof is closed, it's really like getting out of a cage. Oh, I'm getting too old for this. No, it's still quite okay. And why is it still okay? Because the car, of course, is an SUV. It sits a little bit higher. Therefore, it's not that hard than you know, getting out of a cage of a very low sitting convertible. Now to the conclusion of the Range Rover Evoque convertible. Well, the main thing is about what do you think this time, definitely, because, well, my opinion is it does work. I was kind of, well, skeptical at first and especially because no one has done that before, but I really like it when manufacturers do something on their own, something completely new, when they're daring with some cars. We need that, that we not have all the cars looking totally the same. The Evoque itself, the Coupe version, was already daring, and well, that they've done this now after having presented the concept a couple of years behind. That is also, you know, a sense of the, of the whole new strategy of Jaguar Land Rover, and, they say really, okay, we want to dare something. We are very self-confident that we can allow us to build something like that because the company is really very profitable. Again, as it was, you know, off the edges of destruction a couple of years earlier. What will be the main markets? It's probably all Germany, Great Britain and California probably. Um, China won't be the case, not a really convertible market. I'm really looking forward to see these ones on the road and also to drive it myself. Basically, I think it's a good idea to have a convertible lifestyle car, which is also very comfortable, has a higher seating position, because you know the times where you just had convertibles, which I have this very sporty approach, sit very low, there's still customers for that, yes, but I think the main times for that are rather over because a lot of people will buy the convertible for cruising, for riding, not mainly for the very sporty ride. If you want the stiffest, sportiest ride, you probably go for, you know, a pure sports car that also has a closed roof. Therefore, I think this market niche here, no one is in there yet. The Nissan Murano was only available in the US. No one is in there yet in the other markets as well and not with this kind of concept. It's still, you know, quite a compact size with this SUV and therefore I think it could really work and what is also very important, it could also drag customers in general to Land Rover or Range Rover if you see them, oh, you know, that gives a lot of press, a lot of marketing, a lot of attention, that might also draw some attention to other models in the lineup. Now I want to hear your opinion again, put it in the comments, 
really looking forward and also use the thumbs up uh, function for the, each of the comments if you agree to some of the comments and then we'll have you know um, because we're an international community then we have a really repre uh, representative overview what people do think about the Range Rover Vivoc convertible and I hope we'll also see it when we drive this car. Thank you very much for watching Auto Gefühl with Thomas. Tune in for the next episode and subscribe if you haven't done so far. Thanks for watching. Bye.